No, Chad, it doesn't matter. Look, everybody just shows up on Friday for gambling anyways. You know what I mean? It doesn't... No. It, we're, yeah. How late are we? Oh, man, I'm not ready yet. Make myself an espresso. Check Twitter. I might play a snap. I, just, I don't know, bro. Oh, you're live? Great. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, everybody. Hey, 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 hey there. Hey there, everybody. Uh, I want to throw I want to throw something at you guys. I want to see what you guys think about this. Let me see something here. Let me adjust. I think is that good? Maybe this is good. Test, 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 test. I don't know. Maybe this is good. Um, I'm in a different room in Nerd Ventures Tower today. And I'm just kind of, I'm kind of curious. I want to know what you guys think about it. You know, like I like the, I like the, the background in the podcasting, uh, st studio, but, uh, I'm in a different room and I want to know, I want to know what you guys think of it. So let's do a little test. Let's do a little test. Oh, everybody wants the suit, but I'm already in the tower. I only take the suit when I'm, when I'm not at the tower already. Okay, so let's test it out. Let's just let's just see. What do you guys think of it? It's kind of like an underground research facility. This is kind of like where where we're at down here in the tower. Is it cool? I kind of dig it, man. I kind of dig it. It looks wet. What? What? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I don't know. Uh, we're doing some... Uh some upgrades at the tower these days and I, I don't know you know we could uh we could stick with this maybe for the stream and see <laughs> see if you guys like it see where we're at with this uh yeah maybe we'll start streaming down here how's the audio josh is in his pc a little bit yeah it's like how how is the audio maybe upgrade the gambling you shut your mouth when you're talking to me but also yes also, that's fair. Let's get this initiated for everybody. Let's get a gambling going on here. Okay. Only because Moss Moss said so. Ooh, actually, I need to get, change something real quick, too. Give me one second here. Boom. Gambling initiated. I also have, uh, eh, you guys don't need to hear about that stuff. I just got some other cool equipment and stuff that I want to play around with and uh, hopefully just expand the fun that we have here at Nerd Ventures Tower. So I hope you guys are doing well. What a crazy week, huh? What a crazy week. And I didn't think when this week started that we would be talking about DC, that we would be talking about Warner Brothers this much. But here we are. And, uh, of course, yesterday, after what I thought was a really fun stream uh, in the morning, kind of speculating about what the Batgirl news means, what's going on with Warner Brothers, after what I thought was a really fun time. And if you had a fun time yesterday, put a one into the chat. I just, you know, I, I never really know. You know, take your hand off the slot machine for a second. Holy shit. And if you had fun yesterday, put a one into the chat. There you go. There's some guys tag ones. Can you, by the way, it's total side note here. Can you imagine if like my doctor was like, dude, you need to, you need to worry about your blood pressure. You know, if that ever happens, I'm going to point him right at you guys because it's, I'm actually very chill, very zen. I don't like to get all fired up and get all angry and 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 be all crazy. But it's it's really you guys. 
You know, like I'm not I'm not trying to be a dick. But that's on you, okay? Holy shit. Okay, yeah, I should actually get life insurance. You're 100% right. That's that's actually real talk, Steve. That's actually like I haven't had enough coffee real talk, but yes, you're probably right. So anyway, uh, we had a good stream yesterday I thought it was really fun, but the truth was we didn't really know what was going on, right? We're speculating about stuff, and, you know, you guys definitely came in with some hot takes and definitely had uh, some very strong opinions uh, about DC and about Warner Brothers, and... Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to sort of explore what all that meant and what was going on, right? Now, yesterday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, they did the uh, the call. The actual investor call for Warner Brothers happened yesterday around 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. Just out of curiosity, how many of you guys listened to the call or watched the call or was you know watching social media as the call went down? You know, Did you guys watch it? Did you check it out? I did live. Some people did. Nope. Says Jedi Mike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my of course, me just being really interested in the whole thing, I kind of watched uh, the fallout happen on social media. I'm actually not invested uh, in Warner Brothers Discovery or, or WB or whatever, so I didn't get I didn't get an invite to uh, to their to their investor party. Who knows? Maybe at this point, buy a couple shares just to be there for the next one. Because uh, that's something else that's interesting is they said that later this year, for the investor call late this year, they're going to have a big presentation. That's what they promised. And I think that a lot of the sort of vague shit that they talked about yesterday will hopefully be clarified in uh the investor day stream later this year right so yes nick i did i did say that um so i watched it i checked it out i you know i i watched sort of the social media fallout of it and then i actually went back and listened some people recorded the different segments of like what zasloff said about dc specifically and i've listened to the whole he has like a five minute spiel when he's asked about it and he talks about it like that hey christian white uh, welcome to the nerd ventures you are a nerd venture now christian make your way around the tower um so yeah i thought it was really interesting although if i'm being honest I don't think he really laid out much of a plan or said anything of substance yesterday, at least as far as DC is concerned. There were actually some things shared yesterday from a business perspective that are really interesting. And by the way, isn't the, uh, where's Warner Brothers stock price at? We should check that out because that's really what yesterday was about. Uh, he basically, Zaslov just came out and was like, pump the stock, boys. Pump the fucking stock because Daddy Zaslov is here. And we ain't playing no fucking games over here. It's basically what he said. Let's check it out. Okay, so it opened. Uh, from what I'm seeing here, it, it does look like it's opening strong. I wonder if it felt like... I, I have no idea if it performed after hours poorly yesterday or whatever oh wait 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 wait. i should just pull up freaking robin hood but i don't think i'm logged in on this uh on this app here okay so it looks like it did open hot and then it kind of cooled off for a while and now it's kind of accumulating around uh like the 15 dollars mark or whatever by the way how the fuck is this stock 15 dollars? like what's going on here i guess i gotta look at market cap compared to like disney stock and stuff like that but still that's pretty wild so what happened yesterday was really for investors and Zaslav's just being super vague about the DC stuff because I think the truth is they're not necessarily ready to unveil what their actual plan is and they don't have their Kevin Feige yet but he did mention a couple of things which we're going to get into today which I think are really interesting mainly the 10-year plan he mentions resetting the structure over there and he mentions how important 
the IP of Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and then he randomly threw Aquaman in there. Which, look, can I just say this? I don't, you know, I like Aquaman, but it's a fucking shame that Green Lantern isn't in that discussion, but Aquaman is. Like, again, love Aquaman. But from a DC fan perspective, how the fuck is the Lanterns not in there? Like, the Lanterns are such a big part of DC. Uh, at least when I was reading DC, they were they were a huge part of it. So it's kind of weird that he would, like, mention, uh, you know, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and then throw in Aquaman. That's that's weird. I wonder how Aquaman feel, fans feel about that. Uh, but nothing clarified, right? So as I was watching the information kind of come out yesterday... I was like, dude, is he not going to reboot? Because he does mention the fact that they've seen The Flash, Black Adam, and Shazam, uh, and they are really excited about them. They think they're great, I think is the word he used. Right? Something like that. Like He's like, yeah, we think they're excellent, um, and we think we can make them even better. Now, that is kind of an interesting thing to say. We think we can make them even better. And I believe a lot of what hit the tone of what Zasloff was saying yesterday was quality over quantity. And it did seem like in a lot of ways he is taking a completely different perspective uh, than Disney and Disney Plus is, right? So, I don't know. Like, I don't know where you guys want to start with this, but... Uh, Let's get this out of the way, I guess. This is maybe the way we should get it out. Where are the Snyder fans at? What are you guys saying? Like, what? Where's the Snyder? Because look, here's the Snyder. You know where the Snyder base fan is at? And I just want to hear from you guys because we, we just got to like get this part of the discussion out of the way. The Snyder fans are finding any and everything that Zaslov said that could possibly mean that the Snyderverse is coming back. So, like, if Zaslav maybe, like, sneezed off, you know, while he was saying something, and it kind of sounded like Snyder, like, the Snyder fans would be, like, putting that into a video and, like, talking about how the Snyderverse is back, basically. So that's, like, where the fuck we're at with them. But let's just get it out of the way. What do you think yesterday meant? Uh, South Cali guy says, Hamada is out. And I will say, too, if you're a... Uh, if you're a Snyder fan, yeah, that's good news. Like, Hamada, not a fan of the Snyder peeps, and I know a lot of uh, people within the Snyder fan base do not like Walter Hamada. So, yeah, I guess that's a, a small victory, right? A small victory. Because, um, yeah, it does appear that he's out. And, in fact, the real craziness is, and this didn't even happen at the investor call there. And can we just, can we just, let me just frame this discussion here. And look, I'm a little ADD. I have, I've only had one Nespresso. I'm about to make myself another one. Everybody relax. Okay. This is the slow build up the roller coaster. But I think it's important to mention. Yesterday was a business call. Okay. And he's trying to pamp the stock. Say it with me now. P-A-M-P, -P, the stock. Pam. That's it. I need a, I need an effect. He wants to pamp the stock. Pamp it. That's what yesterday was about. He's trying to pamp the stock. So, you know what doesn't pamp the stock? If you come out and say, we're going to reboot, fuck all this Hamada shit. I'm probably going to cancel The Flash. I don't give a shit about Black Adam. I don't give a shit about Suzanne. I don't give a shit about Aquaman. I don't give a shit about any of this shit. Okay? If you come out and say that, that doesn't pamp the stock. Because you've got those movies coming out, dude. He had to walk a really interesting line yesterday. He had to set up expectations that things are going to be way fucking different. While also letting you know that these last couple of servings of familiar go down real good. You know? So, that's kind of the vibe I got from the presentation. From what he wanted to do. I believe he didn't even mention DC specifically or like the plans or whatever until he was asked about it. 
Uh, and when he was asked about it, he had a decent little thing to say. Should we just listen to what he said? The five the five minute thing? I think this is what we should do, okay? I think I should go put another Nespresso on. I think I should open up this new smart water and have a nice big sip. Because you got to stay hydrated. You got to stay hydrated. Chet, there's a problem with the camera. There's some kind of glitch in which it feels like there's a green screen of sorts here, but it's clearly not. It's clearly an actual room here in the tower, and we need to fix it immediately. So you need to figure that shit out, Chet. I don't know what... I don't know what... I don't know how to do it. You do it. Mm. Okay. Does smart water make you smart? Bro, if you're asking that, you can't afford it. <clears throat> okay. Everybody, hold on to your buttholes while I go put another Nespresso on. By the way, shout out to the Nerd Avengers. Like, y'all are incredible. This is, every time I have an Nespresso, I feel like I'm cradled in the arms. And I mean the, the eight different arms of some kind of Hindi caffeine god that just... Wraps me in its arms and makes me know everything's going to be okay. But when that first bit of frothy, airy, foamy top of the Nespresso hits your lips. It's like that scene in fucking Ratatouille, bro. Every single time. It's unbelievable. And I want more. So I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> let's get this pulled up. What the hell was that? Oh shit, Disney Plus is playing? Oh no, that's not good. Hang on. I think I know why this is happening. Remove. Okay. Okay, okay. Everybody calm down. We're going to pull up this uh, DC thing. Listen to the five minutes. Where is it at? Somebody had it on here. Like a lot of people like transcribed it or whatever, but there was some dude that actually like recorded it. And I thought that was real chill. Hmm. Damn. Can I really just not find this? Yo, chat. If somebody has the five minute... It's, it was on Reddit. It was on one of the subreddits. I just can't remember which one. Uh, if somebody has that, uh, hit me up on Discord or something. Damn, they post a lot of shit there. Okay. Maybe it's in the DCE leaks. Subreddit. Where is it at? And again, you know, in the context of like kind of what we're talking about here, uh, and this is kind of interesting. I'll pull this up. This is a leak, uh, a statement from Big Screen Leaks here. Uh, in the context of what happened yesterday, again, it's kind of important to note that the that's not the type of call that you announce you're pushing movies back. Yeah, that's just not that that's not that call you know what i mean and it's also it's not the call that you announce you're uh getting rid of the flash so if they are getting rid of the flash that's not the day like that's not that day that's not what you do there you know what i mean 
Okay, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, here we go. Big screen leaks. And big screen leaks is reliable. You know, just kind of saying, I'm not saying Flash is getting scrapped, but if we're saying everything is okay, is just a straight up lie. We all know there's major problems with the move, with the movie, uh, and it's star. How will Warner Bros. Discovery confront this is something we hopefully will know soon. Right. So this is like crazy because there's news in the press that happened all day yesterday and the day before that was not stuff that was talked about by Zaslav for this presentation. Okay. And we're going to get into that in a second. Now, let me go get my sweet, sweet, delicious Nespresso. Oh, my God. I'll be right back. You know what I think? I think we need a uh, uh, a foam cam. You know what I mean? Because, like, y'all can't even see that foamy goodness. I think we need a separate cam just on the foam. Whew! Some WD-40 on that door? Why is it creaking? Wow. Wow. Oh, Trev, there it is. Thank you, Trev. Yep, this is it. This is it. Mmm. Hot damn. Okay, uh, before we get into this, just because I always forget about doing like adult stuff and running a proper show, uh, I do want to say that today's stream and all the streams over here are brought to you by Paradox Customs PC. Very, very happy to be partnered with these dudes, make incredible PCs. They have a great growing brand, incredible group of dudes, uh, and they made me an incredible PC. I can do unbelievable things with it. I was time traveling last night, okay? Now, look, they're not going to build you a PC that can time travel, but they built me one that can, and they'll build you one that's really damn good, way better than the one you have now. Use code NERDVENGERS at checkout to, so that they know that we sent you and you get a little bit of money off the top of your order. Go check out Paradox Customs PC, and many of you already have, and I appreciate that. Number old dose. We are going to be doing a uh, Prime stream today. At 1 p.m. It's going to be a short one, unfortunately, because I have to go. I got to go get my license renewed. There's a bunch of adulting I have to do today, so I got to get out of here. But tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we're going to be doing a watch party. If you're a Nerdvenger member, come on by. I'll do a link on the uh, community tab. I'll share it in the Discord. We will be watching Earth's Mightiest Heroes together tomorrow. It's an incredible Avengers cartoon. If you've never seen it, it's super dope. Uh, so we'll watch a couple episodes of that. We might even watch some Kang Secret Wars cartoon stuff. Just to see what Marvel's been doing uh, with that in the animation. So come on by for that shit! Let's listen to what uh, Zaslav says here. One of the top of the list for us. Um, we, Wait, what? You look at, this is only uh, the minute Superman, version, Superman, Trev. Superman. There's a five-minute version of this. Um, these are brands that are known everywhere in the world. Anybody got the five-minute version? To drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We have done a reset. We've restructured the business where, where we're going to focus, where there will be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on D.C. Okay, so this it's is only the one minute. There's a, the there's a five-minute version of this. Anybody got the five-minute? Put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at uh, Disney. We think that we could build a, a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of D.C. And as part of that, we're going to focus on no, quality. That's still one we're minute. not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film from a quarter. We're not going to release a film under the focus is going to be how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible. But D.C. is, DC is, is one of the top of the list for us. Um, we, you look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, um, 
These are brands that are known everywhere in the world, and the ability to drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We have done a reset. We've restructured the business where, where we're going to... Okay, so it's it's pretty interesting here. So he says um, that Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Aquaman, uh, huge globally recognizable brands, really, really massive. They're great, and we think we can uh, expand them, I think is what he says. You look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. Um, these are brands that are known everywhere in the world, and the ability to drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We drive those brands with great story. That's cool. We have done a reset. So we have done a reset. We restructured the business where, where we're going to focus, where there will be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on D.C. A team with a 10-year plan. He's restructured the company, okay? And remember, when he killed Batgirl, uh, Hamada almost stormed off. He was almost like, I'm out of here. And apparently, he's now going to stay until at least Black Adam comes out. Right? So, they're going to hang with him until Black Adam comes out. But he says, we have done a reset. We've restructured the company. Okay? And so, this is where... Um, thank you, Black and Rich. And thank you, everybody, for the Super Chats. We'll go over them in the back half of the show. As always, much love to you guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> but uh, crazy, dude. Like, look, he's not saying reboot, but he is saying they did a reset, they did this structural thing, and they have this 10 year plan. And then he's going to name drop now Bob Iger. He's going to name drop Alan Horn. He's going to name drop uh, Kevin Feige. Your plan focusing just on DC. It's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and and Bob Iger put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at uh, Disney. We think that we could build a, a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of D.C. And as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. We're not going to release... Okay, so pretty interesting. Let's go over that again. With Kevin Feige at... So he says a very effective strategy that Bob Iger and Alan Horn put together with Kevin Feige. That's kind of like low-key, like... A little bit of shade at Feige, right? But it is fair to say, and this is something that like Trev always tries to bring up as well, is that Feige would didn't act alone. There were a lot of structural things that kind of worked together to create the MCU. AV Arad actually did play kind of a big role in its beginning stages, and there's there's a lot that happens. But eventually, like Feige becomes the creative force of nature that's driving that whole thing, and everything else kind of watersheds away. And all of those things are now gone, and it's pretty much just Feige. And I think most of us believe that you can't really replicate Feige. You can't really... Like, there is nobody really like him. Um, and just simply restructuring does not actually mean you will have the success of that kind of a formula. But it is at least a plan. You know what I mean? Like, it is at least a plan. So, I don't know, man. Let's listen to again. DC. It's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and, and Bob Iger put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at uh, Disney. We think that we could build a, a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of D.C. And as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. We're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film from a quarter. We're not going to release a film... Under the focus is going to be how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible. But DC is something that we think we could make better, and we're focused on it now. Okay, so we can make it better. We're focused on it now. 10-year plan. Now, the shot about quality and not releasing a film until we think it's ready, quality over quantity, I think that ties into a little bit of Zaslav's thoughts about big Hollywood, big picture theatrical movies and how those movies continue to drive revenue even when they hit streaming, okay? So it kind of ties into that where like if you look at Marvel's strategy right now, it is very clearly not quality over quantity and I love the MCU and I'm excited for She-Hulk, 
but I don't know any single MCU other than maybe Loki and What If for me personally that I feel it stands up to like really really good television out there. Maybe Moon Knight, maybe WandaVision, um, but it's not stuff that like I must revisit it's not something that i think demands viewership from people that are just looking for incredible content it's it's uh it's disney plus content you know what i mean and i think it's really interesting that instead of maybe and again we don't know right because it's literally a minute here it's five minutes total if we can find that five minutes but like either way that's not a lot of time dedicated to actually talking about what the execution is here but in the philosophical sense, it seems like he wants to replicate what was done with the MCU and with restructuring that business and allowing it to really be dedicated and have its own plan. But it's quality over quantity. And maybe instead of green lighting all these million DC shows, you know, green lighting, um, a spinoff to the Batman before the Batman is even out uh, and shit like that. Maybe it's like, no, like we're going to make incredible content. It's also, you know, if you look at even from the branding perspective, they're, they're probably going to drop HBO Max, which has more to do with this big streaming service that they're going to do next year. But this Max thing is going to drop off of HBO and it's just going to go back to being HBO. And HBO had a very specific brand back in the day because it's not television, it's HBO's, it's home box office. It's supposed to replicate the idea and feeling of box office, silver screen level production uh, and quality on uh, cable or, you know, on that premium cable channel, right? So... Even though Max is probably still going to be a part of whatever the name is for the streaming service, it's going to be dropped from HBO. It's no longer going to be associated with the HBO brand. And so I think what he intends to do here is really focus on putting out like really, really good product. I also think this is somewhat of a shot to Kevin Suchihara. And to what happened with Justice League. Because if you look at what happened with the Justice League movie, the original one, uh, there were a lot of reports that Kevin Sujihara forced that movie to A, be under, or B, two hours, and B, to be done by the end of the year. When he brought Joss Whedon in to fix it up, he said, this movie's going to be less than two hours, and it's going to be coming out by the end of the year. And part of that was allegedly because of um, quarterly earnings and the ability for them to get bonuses. Right, so literally, Suchihara was like, "I don't give a fuck about Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. No, I give a fuck about my bonus, bro. That movie's coming out, right?" And so, a lot of what Zaslav said yesterday, even though I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, he's talking about the Batgirl," I think he's actually talking about a lot. You know what I mean? He's talking about a lot, um, but yeah, Batgirl was probably stinky poo poo anyway. You know, but he doesn't want to do. Anything that's not dope AF and that I think will fit into this wider vision, which will have a big budget behind it. Like some of you guys were asking me yesterday, like, do you think he's going to do way cheaper movies because he's trying to save money and it feels like he's very JPEG in that way where he wants to save money? I don't get that impression at all. In fact, if you if you really dig into what he said which I really wish we had the five minutes. Anybody got the five minute? Because he talks about the flash and all that shit in the five minute. You know what I mean? Who's got the five minute clip? Anybody? Hmm. Oh, that Nespresso's pretty nice. It's on Reddit. I know it's on Reddit, bro. Think I don't know? Sheesh. Is that it? Is that it, Trev? Let's see here. Boom. Okay, here we go. Let's listen to the full thing, man. Shout out to Trev. Okay, let's listen to the full thing. Let's ask two if I could. I guess uh, first, David, there's a lot of reporting in the press about film dates being delayed and, of course, the canceling of Batgirl. 
Um, I think that. So that's so funny because he's not even like, again, Zaslav wouldn't have even address this if it were not for this question. And remember, he's saying here, there's a lot of reports in the press about things being delayed. And, you know, again, when I said yesterday, I said that Grace was right again. I was actually talking about the merging of the two streaming services, which she was the first to report on. But she also reported before the trades confirmed it that they're probably pushing Shazam back and they're going to push um, Aquaman 2 back. And that the Flash is actually undated, right? And so that broke. Grace broke that. And then the Hollywood trades broke that. Zaslav's not trying to talk about that shit, bro. He's not trying to talk about that on an investor day. He's trying to say, pamp the stock. And that doesn't pamp the stock, right? So that's not his business. But that's the way that it's framed here is there's a lot of stuff going on in the press. Hi, good afternoon. I to ask two if I could. I guess uh, first, David, there's a lot of reporting in the press about film dates being delayed and, of course, the canceling of Batgirl. Um, I think that film in particular was almost completed. Can you just talk about the reason for the decision to cancel Batgirl? And was it an issue? And what's happening more broadly Warner Brothers film business, changes you might be making, and, and basically the direction you're taking with the DC universe. And then just had one for JB on the fast product. Is the intent, is the intent there to offer the fast service in Western markets like the U.S. where consumers are accustomed to paying for content, or will it be more limited to markets where you've got, you know, where you would have a low penetration of paid services and therefore, you know, a way of building penetration where you might not otherwise um, achieve it? Thank you. Great. Thanks, Brian. Um, That thanks, Brian, was a fuck you, by the way. You got to learn to speak Hollywood and shit. And this actually, you know, one of the first times that I was ever in New York City and I actually realized that people could say thank you like fuck you. And that's, yeah, that's a thing. Thanks, Brian. Let me start with uh, the fact that the Warner Brothers motion picture group has fantastic IP and a great history, as you know, where they're turning 100. And between DC, the animation group, uh, together with the, the entire Warner Library, um, our ambition is to bring Warner back and to produce great, high-quality films. And as we look at the opportunities that we have broadly, DC is, is one of the top of the list for us. Yeah. Um, we, you look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. So this Aquaman. is the part we already heard. Um, these are brands that are known everywhere in the world. And the ability to drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We have done a reset. We've restructured the business where, where we're going to focus, where there will be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on D.C. It's Thanks, very similar Josh. To the yeah. uh, you, you think Alan I don't see? You think I don't see y'all? Put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at uh, Disney. We think that we could build a a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of D.C. And as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. We're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film to make a quarter. We're not going to release a film uh, under the focus is going to be how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible. But DC is something that we think we could make better, and we're focused on it now. So here's more. Um, we have some great DC films coming up, Black Adam, uh, Shazam, and Flash. And we're working on all of those. We're very excited about them. Um, we've seen them. We've- so, yeah, so, okay. I think that's actually kind of telling there. I- I'm not... Look, at this point, obviously we're speculating, and obviously I think Reboot is coming. That's kind of where I'm at. But I do think that it's kind of curious how he says this whole thing about this 10-year plan and everything. And then he pivots into saying, and we've got some DC films coming right now. Like, does that, do you feel like I'm reaching there? Or do you think that there's also a distinction being made there? Do you know what I mean? Let me know. Build a, a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of DC. And as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. We're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film to make a quarter. We're not going to release a film under the focus is going to be how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible. But DC 
is something that we think we could make better, and we're focused on it now. Yeah, so that's the part. We, DC is something we could make better, and we're focused on it now. Now here's like a whole new thought by him, right? Um, we have some great DC films coming up, Black Adam, uh, Shazam, and Flash. And we're working on all of those. We're very excited about them. Um, we've seen them. We think they're terrific, and we think we could make them even better. And We think we could make them even better. So that is actually something really interesting. Because, yes, they probably could make them better, right? But what's the number one way they could make the Flash movie better? Chat? Anybody? Anybody have an idea? Anybody have a have a thought that they want to share with the class? Yeah, get Ezra the fuck out of there. Period. Okay? Now, let's talk about the 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 news, man. The news. Yeah, dude, obviously, replace Ezra with Alex Jones. 100%. Obviously. And uh, after yesterday, Alex could sure use the money. So that's probably the direction that they're going to go. But let's first talk about what's going on with Ezra. So, while this is going on, and look, it's it's being reported. We don't know for sure, okay? But... The, I believe the two there was two ladies that worked on this story. They're very good at what they do, and they put together a big report about how. And this is like, at some point, you know, I, I say like this. This kind of sounds unbelievable, but I promise you, like this is what's actually being reported. But when it comes to Ezra, throw a chair at Lady Cracker in the head, Miller. Nothing should surprise you anymore. But it is being reported that Ezra is literally in the states on the run. Wearing body armor and armed because he believes the FBI is coming after him. Guys, that's not like, I didn't just mad lib that. Like, we're not playing uh, fucking cards against humanity. Like, that's a, that's a real story, dude. Like, are you kidding me? That's crazy. Like, that is that is the type of news that's circulating out there while this dude's saying we've seen The Flash and we think it's terrific. You know what I mean? So, the point is, uh, I, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, he's telling one story here, and I think it's to, to sort of convey confidence in the projects and the things that are coming out. I really think that they've... That it's a reboot, and that's kind of where they're going with it. Hamad is out. Pretty much everybody that was doing this was out. And on top of that, you have to take in context all of the stories that are breaking in the press that weren't discussed yesterday, like all these HBO original things that are gone. The fact that the Supergirl movie, gone. Um, the fact that these movies are being pushed back and being reworked. What does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, but... uh I just think my first take yesterday was like, damn, dude, if they're going to release The Flash, then maybe he is going to do this new post-Flashpoint DCEU with some of these actors, obviously not Batgirl and Supergirl, but maybe still Supergirl. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's going to do a hodgepodge of that. I don't really feel like that's the case. Now that I've like really listened to what he said and kind of digested it, like I think he's allowing these other movies to come out, and I don't even know if The Flash will actually come out, but he's allowing all of these movies to come out, and then they're probably going to announce their big reboot and their, and their new thing, okay? So let's keep going here, and then I've got some other thoughts I want to share with you. And that's what Mike and Pam and the team are doing. Uh, and focusing on that. Can you guys hear um, that okay? Strategically, we've looked hard at the <laughs> at the director streaming business. We've seen, luckily, by having access now to all the data, how director streaming movies perform. And our conclusion is that expensive director streaming movies, in terms of how people are consuming them on the platform, how often people go there or buy it or buy a service for it, and how it gets nourished over time, uh, is no comparison to what happens when you launch a film in the motion picture, in, in the theaters. 
And so this idea of expensive films going direct to streaming, we cannot find an economic case for it. We can't find an economic value for it. And so we're making a strategic shift. So this is like so vastly different than what Jason Kilar and what a lot of people, because there was uh, like, bro, it seems like this is just going old school. And it's kind of fucking wild because he's going old school in such a way that is so splashy. It's so bold. It's so aggressive. Like canceling Batgirl, like, yo, low key, low key. My man might have just canceled Batgirl to get some headlines, dude. Like, that's how crazy this all seems to me. Like, he's just so fucking bold where he's basically like, yeah, everybody in the past couple of years got it fucking wrong. Uh, none of this shit makes economic sense. We're going to reopen all of these uh, revenue streams. You know, I'm going to put ads on Game of Thrones. I don't give a fuck, basically, is what Zaslav was saying. And it's so counter to not only Jason Kalar, what was going on, you know, with HBO Discovery or uh, Warner Media, rather, but also it's way different than what you're seeing going on over at Marvel. I'm a Marvel fan. I'm loving what's going on. But it is interesting. You know, on that very same day, uh, there was an article, I think, that came out in Forbes yesterday about how there might be superhero fatigue. Right. Did you all see that article? Talking about uh, superhero fatigue and just how there's just a little bit too much, man. You know? And look, I think we're kind of... I said it before. I'd be okay with less. I would absolutely be okay with less. In fact, let's go to Pole Town. Let's go to Pole Town. Would you like the MCU to slow down... On content. I'm not even saying, like, I just want to know this. Just just what do you think? Do you want them to slow down? Do you want them to slow down? Because to me, um, I would be totally okay with a slowdown and a more of a focus on quality, like he is saying. And it's interesting that he may be a little bit ahead of the puck here. You know what I mean? He may be a little bit ahead of everybody. Because it might just kind of be like consumer behavior might start to grind in this direction right at a time when Marvel's going to give you like Marvel's going to give you probably 11, 12, 14 projects a year for the next for, for the foreseeable future. Right. And so it's crazy. It's just interesting to me that like he's like, no, we don't see a case for that. No, 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 no. Uh, as part of that. um, We've been out in the town talking about our commitment to the theatrical uh, exhibition and the theatrical window. A number of movies will be launched with shorter windows. Some might have different kinds of marketing campaigns where we take advantage of us having the biggest platform and a platform that all motion picture companies look for. But we'll always be agile. Our focus will be on theatrical. And when we bring the theatrical films to HBO Max, we find they have substantially more value. And we have an ecosystem where we can have the premier motion picture business. That's why most people moved to Hollywood. That's why most people got in this business, to be on the big screen when the lights went out. And that is the magic. And the economic model is much stronger. And the other thing is that we're going to focus very hard on quality. I said we're not going to launch a movie until it's ready. We're not going to launch a movie to make a quarter. And we're not, we are not going to release a movie uh, and we're not going to put a movie out unless we believe in it. And that's it. I mean, and particularly with DC, where we think we want to pivot and we want to elevate and we want to focus. And Brian, on fast, two quick comments. Well, he says something else at the end here about protecting the DC brand. So I want to kind of jump Part to Part of the assessment that we're going to under, we're looking at and we'll look through over the next few months. And as we have more details of how we think and where we think the opportunity is the richest, we'll come back to you and, and take you through it. Just the, the, the objective is to grow the D.C. brand, to grow the D.C. characters, but also our job is to protect the D.C. brand. And that's, that's what- interesting, right? Like, again, like it, this idea, it's it's really old school, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's really just old school the way I think he's approaching this and the way I think he's thinking about it. And uh, I think he wants to recreate the magic of the first 10 years of Marvel, you know, and I, 
I thought a lot about this, man. I, you know, it's kind of like my job or whatever. But I thought like way too much about this yesterday because in some ways Marvel is completely different now. And I, it's still like the MCU and it still has its own thing or whatever. But like, you know, I'm ex so excited for Secret Wars and I'm so hyped up for all of these different things that they have going on. But either way, it's different because as Feige said, you're going to have some projects that are going to connect to that big story that are going to sort of take you on a, what did he say, like a uh, uh, express way to that story and that outcome. But you're also going to have all this other story that doesn't. You know what I mean? And so just by that in and of itself, it's a very different animal, right? So it is different and it does not feel the same. And I, I kind of like have this feeling of like, man, like I wonder if it'll ever feel the same. I'll probably still always love it and still always be down, but it might not ever feel the same. That's probably okay. You know what I mean? But Warner Brothers doesn't have that. I mean, Warner Brothers, the best years of Warner Brothers are probably the Nolan shit. And, you know, you could argue some of the Zack Snyder stuff, but even then, I don't really think so. I love Zack, but his movies were not always well received by even the wider DC audience. Like, I had DC friends that are like, nah, dude, Man of Steel, fuck that movie. Like, legitimately, like, just can't... They didn't like the characterization of Clark. They didn't like how it was postmodern. They damn sure didn't like how Superman killed uh, Zod at the end of the film. You know what I mean? And again, I like Zack. I like the vision. I think Man of Steel's a masterpiece. But it was never even really protecting of the DC brand, right? Like, Zack's a wild boy. He did some wild shit. And they just kind of let it fly because they were just like riding that Goyer, you know, kind of grittiness out of the Nolan stuff. Um, but DC has never had a proper characterization of their characters. Even Batman, and I love the Nolan Batman, but that's not even Batman. Like, real talk, that's not even Batman <clears throat> from the comics. It gets close in a couple of areas, but it doesn't nail it, right? And DC has, in my opinion, never been able to really follow the blueprint of just proper... DC comic stories being adapted like literally never except in the animated form in the animated form yeah like they do really well with a lot of that stuff because I don't feel like they don't feel like they have to handhold as much as I think the live action stuff does but uh yeah man I I think that uh I think you're gonna see a reboot I still think reboot is coming so let's go to the polls after everything we just talked about, after everything that Zaz Zaslov said, uh, what do you guys think? Do you think the DCEU is going to totally reboot? And I'll put full reboot on because I don't think it's a half-ass flash shit anymore. I don't think that's happening, bro. Yeah. Because I think... If he says reset, he says emulating the Marvel formula, and he says 10-year plan. Dude, Jason Momoa ain't playing Aquaman for 10 more years, bro. Gal Gadot is not going to play Wonder Woman for 10 more years, bro. Like, that shit ain't happening. So, to me, I still think it's full reboot, okay? Now, let me just say this, too. I'll say this, because I know I made a bet with you guys. Fucking lame-ass bet. But I know I made a bet with you guys, okay? So here's what we're going to do, okay? There's another investor call at the end of this year, which is promised by Zaslav to be a super big deal for what they're going to do. They're going to talk about a bunch of their ideas, a bunch of their shit, okay? Later this year. If it is not announced before or during that presentation that the flash is going away i'll still watch the scary movie with you but i do think the reboot is coming i pr i'm so i'm pretty confident in the reboot i don't know if i'm bet the hair confident but i'm pretty confident that there's going to be a reboot so strange times strange times man now, the other thing that I think they could be doing with The Flash, and he kind of says this, right? Where he says, we have, we're not going to release a movie before it's ready. We're, we're not going to release a movie to make a quarter. We're, we're not going to do any of that. We'll take as long as we need, and we're going to focus on quality. For all 
of the shitty stuff that Ezra has done, the report about the movie itself is that it kind of slaps. It's got a very, very high test screening score. People really like the film. Okay? And even though it would be a lot of money to do even further reshoots, it would be a lot of money to replace a person that isn't just have one role in the movie, but has two major roles in the movie. That would be a pain in the buttocks to do. I think that's probably still a better call than just straight up canceling it. Because the bones of the story, the performances of the other actors, some of the special effects, and the overall vibe of the movie is probably really, really good. So the question is, can you actually replace Ezra in this movie? How much is it going to cost? How much are you going to have to do to replace Ezra in this movie? And is it even worth doing that if you will not be care? Because the reports are, guys. And this is, this is from very good insiders. This also broke in the trades. They're done with Ezra. Either way, they're done with Ezra. Ezra will no longer be working with Warner Brothers, I think, in anything. No Fantastic Beasts. No more Flash. That's pretty well established. So the question is, what are you going to do about this movie? Like, what, what are you going to do about this film? I got no idea, bro. You know, like, I guess, I guess there's kind of three options, right? Look at this. 80% of people say they're going to hard reboot. Dude. That's crazy. There's way more of you that feel that way than yesterday. You know what I mean? That's crazy. So. Wow. Wow. So, three options I think that could happen with The Flash. Number one, they put enough distance between what's going on now. Like, what if The Flash doesn't come out until 2024? And what if Ezra's on some kind of apology tour, in therapy, whatever, right? That's a possibility. Maybe they could make that work. Maybe. A lot can happen in a year. Who knows? Um, second option. They replace Ezra... Bring in someone else. I don't know. Maybe do some digital effect wizardry or whatever and remove Ezra from the movie completely. Uh, and then option number three, they cancel the movie. And I actually still think that's a, that's a an option for them. You know? So, I definitely think... I think one of those three things will happen. <clears throat> that's what I think. And if I had to guess... I'd say cancel. You know what I mean? Really and truly, I think they'll probably cancel it. Because it currently does not have a date. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you cancel it late in the year, but you also have like two big movies still planned for next year, and you kind of start teasing out the new stuff, because I think the question is this, right? You got to think about it from this perspective. If the real plan is a total reboot, you can't really say that while these other movies are still said to release. Because if you say that, you devalue the current DC movies, right? So we can't exactly come out and say, oh, yeah, 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 no, total new boot. Total new boot? Uh, new boot is, is the best word ever. I just invented it. So we're doing a new boot in DC. But you can't say that because you're going to devastate the value of these films, right? And so he still wants these movies to be big blockbuster gets. Um, and so that's that's kind of what I think. That's kind of what I think is going on. I don't know. What else is going on? Is there anything I missed as far as uh, things that came out yesterday, what he's talking about? I don't really know, man. What do you guys think? Did I miss anything? Having no date doesn't mean canceling. They may be changing so much. Yeah, no, that's true. That's, I mean, that's 100% true. It doesn't necessarily mean it's canceled. It could be massively reshot. You know what I mean? 
You missed the Collins? No, I haven't missed Collins. We'll do Collins. Uh, let me get through the super chats first, then we'll do Collins, then we'll call it a day. Because again, I gotta get on out of here. I gotta get on out of here. Ah, ah, ah. What do you think? Like, should we should we keep this this background thing, or should we go back to the old podcast studio? Any boba season two tea? No, I got no tea, brother. I got no tea. I ain't got no tea. Check your super chat. I'm going to check everybody's super chat. Oh, fuck. Don't send any member chats today. They're not going to work. I screwed up. I really wish they would just save the member chats on this other screen over here. Don't send any member chats. Save your member chat. I'm not going to be able to freaking read them today. Holy shit. Okay, we got a couple of super chats to get into here. So here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, Mr. J. Westman, $2 holla says it's Nespresso or bin time. 100%. Now I'm going to probably spill that all over my electronics because I couldn't put the lid on it. Mm. Yo, chat, I'm tired, bro. I'm tired. I did a workout yesterday. Dude, it kicked my ass, bro. I'm tired. Uh, let's see here. Muggle Million says, Gun will be the Feige of DC. You know, Gun, to his credit, to his credit, He's a super comic sweaty, and he probably knows a lot of the same shit that Feige knows. Like, him, him and Feige are, like, sweaty sweat comic book nerds. And it's also possible that James Gunn, being so much in the orbit of Kevin Feige, has absorbed some of the juice that makes that system run. You know, Peacemaker, which had less people watch its first episode than Miss Marvel, did something really remarkable in that its finale had like 44% more people watch it. And that's all because of the Justice League. Like he basically like, Gunn was trying to do the Kevin Feige thing even in his uh, stupid little Peacemaker show. So there's some flashes of brilliance there and I'm not saying he couldn't do it. I, I don't know. I guess I would reserve my judgment until we actually saw what it looked like, but I'm not the biggest fan of Gunn's vibe. I'm not the biggest fan. So I don't know how I'd feel about that. Christian White says with a ten dollar holla, you convinced me with your sultry gaze to finally ascend, Josh. Also, take my MCU adapts kind of mid comics run and makes them great. DC has, a, I feel amazing runs, and they've said nah, fam. Oh, your that's your take. I thought you said take my. Okay, that's your take. I actually like that take. They adapt all kind of mid comic book runs and make them great. DC has amazing comic book runs and they're like, nah, fam. No, I agree. It's like the difference between adapting great comic book stories or just making content with these characters, right? It's a totally different thing. Overbound Game Studio, holy shit, very generous 20 spot, says, Zaz said he got his boy, chief of content creator, Casey Blow Boys, uh, and his team and was talking him up big time. Could he be the Feige? Who is this guy? What has he done? So, uh, I don't know too much about him, but I think he's a television kind of streaming genius. Like, that's, I think, what he is known for. So, I don't think he's the Feige, but he may well create some really, really incredible content and strategy for their streaming stuff. That's that's just what I gathered. I, I don't really know too much about the guy. Expo City says, if Cavill is with Marvel, will he have time for DC? Uh, no, bro. He's not, like... You know, it's a Friday, you know, we're chilling, you know, we're chilling, uh, it's all good and, and, and all that. Uh, let's go to the polls. Let's go to the polls. I'd like to know. Do you think Henry Cavill will come back as Superman? Y yes or no? Yes or no? Just just let me know, Chad. I, I obviously don't, but whatever. Uh, okay, Representative Bink says, 
with a 666. Nice, bro. DCEU should reboot with Battinson verse. That's not a bad idea. Even though I thought that movie was pretty mid, it does at least have uh, its own kind of mise en scene uh, and its own vibe. And I wouldn't mind seeing the DC universe come out of that kind of a universe. But I don't think Matt Reeves is interested in doing that shit. So I don't think that's going to happen. Although I will say this. I actually do think Batman 2 could happen under Zasloff. But that's only because he was so fucking vague yesterday. We have no idea. Right? It's really tricky right now. We don't know, dude. You know? Mandalore says with a 10 spot. Appreciate you, man. Says, morning, meh. Listen to you blab about Nespresso and whatnot. Has me looking forward to mine. Oh, yeah, you're getting Nespresso? That's sick. Uh, also, speaking of looking forward to something, next Monday, Nerd Theory should be stellar. Special Ball Josh to debut. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm not hyped. I'm not excited about that, but thank you for the support, I guess. Uh, Wrecked Proctor with a 10 spot says, I honestly didn't like the Batman. My hope is that in this new cohesive universe that they make a more fantastical Batman instead of this realism crap I'm tired of the same old villains yeah yeah I've said this before but like imagine if we never got out of the cave with Tony Stark imagine if we just kept going back to the cave in the desert with Tony Stark like every five to ten years then we'd never get to the juice of endgame right you'd never get there they're not even allowing these characters to just develop and go through these different beats, do all the crazy things that Batman has done. I want to see the Bat God. You know? I want to see that guy. So, yeah, hopefully we get there. Black and Ridge with the 10 spot says, Nerd Vengeance for life! Oh, yeah, shout out to the Nerd Vengeance and shout out to all of you that have been doing gifted memberships. We are over a thousand members, guys. That's crazy. Like, that means, like, if we got all of us in a room together, that that would be a pretty fucking imposing force. Also, a really sweaty, nerdy force, too. We'd, we'd have to bring a couple extra uh, things of deodorant. Because we're going to get real sweaty. In the best way possible. That's enough to, to fill a, uh, a, a theater for Secret Wars in a couple of years, huh? Bro, we should get all the Nerd Avengers in New York... And the day before we go to see the movie, we should just literally walk around New York City like a thousand deep, dude. Like, can you imagine that shit? Like, if we just literally rolled like a thousand deep just through the city to the streets of New York, just preaching the good word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Speak of the devil. Andre. You live in New York City? Oh, that's sick, dude. Well, you got to come to our uh, thing when we see Secret Wars then. And also, I'll hit you up if I ever just am in the city. Yeah, dude. 10 gifted. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Andre. I appreciate that, man. You guys are so kind, man. Okay. Uh, Rec Proctor follows up and says, If they do a more fantastical Batman, my hope is that they use villains like Clayface, Bane on Venom, Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze. It's not that hard. Yeah, I agree. I agree, dude. Like, as a big DC fan, like, come on, man. There's just juice. There's gold in them hills, and y'all ain't even trying. You know what I mean? Rusty says, may the force be with you, bro. Hey, may the force be with you, too, brother. Yo, can we sidebar for just one second? Can we do, like, a little ADD sidebar chat? Yo. Ah, snap. Sneaked. Uh, let's go. What's your daughter's name, bro? Like, happy birthday to, to the young... Lady Venger. Let's just say that. Can we get a happy birthday for the young Lady Venger into the chat, guys? Holy shit. C-dub. Okay. All right, everybody. Look. Much love. Much love. And look at everybody. Look at all these new members. Look, Rusty's. There we go. Rusty, you're in. Jareth Loveberry, you're in. John, you're in. Hey, C-dub. Nice. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you guys will all be able to come to the watch party tomorrow morning, man. We're going to watch some cartoons together. We're going to have some cereal, some coffee, and some blinkers. And we're going to watch some cartoons, bruh. What was I saying? Oh, okay. Let me ask you this, dudes. And dudettes. What's the deal with the Acolyte? Okay. Oh, my God. Matt Campbell with another five, bro. Holy cow. 
Insanity. Welcome, all ye new nerd vengers. That's crazy. Dude, you guys are going nuts. Um, that's crazy. Uh, how do you guys feel about the Acolyte? Because some of the leaks that are coming out, they seem kind of dope. But I feel like there's just so much just negativity about the Acolyte. And I get it, like, dude, it's Star Wars. Don't, don't you don't have to fucking tell me. I understand, but like, these leaks kind of seem dope, bro. Like these leaks kind of seem pretty fucking dope, bro. Oh, hey, Kevin Feige. Yeah, everything's good, baby. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I don't know. I just find that really interesting. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a video about the new Acolyte leaks over the weekend, but like. Just a lot of people are like, no, no. So, I don't know. Hell yeah, Rusty. Hell yeah. Okay. Tyler says, are you and Rob still doing the podcast on the state of Star Wars? I think y'all uh, share views on the fandom and a lot come around that combo. Dude, I'd love to. Look, I'm not trying to call anybody out, but I hit Rob up in the DMs. He didn't say shit back to me. Okay. So maybe I went too hard on John Campier or something, or maybe he just doesn't like my face. But Rob, I just want to talk, bro. My friend Paul, so maybe he's the true Sith. There you go. You know what I mean? I just want to. I just want to chat. You know. Maybe I'm too wild, bro. Maybe like the thing is, people would be like, "Oh, well, you know, this could be fun," and then they look into the content and they see me on camera, like just go. Ah! And they're like, I can't fuck with that. Like, I can't. That energy, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Maybe I should calm down. John Campion mentioned you earlier this week and his fans been dissing in the comments. Oh, is that true? <laughs> Yo, I went kind of hard on Campia. I went kind of hard on Campia. Maybe I just should be more okay, let's try this. Let's try a new a new uh a new way to approach the 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 streams. Hello everybody. Welcome to the Nerdvenger stream. This is politically correct and calm Josh here today to talk to you about the nerdy news. Just wanna say a shout out to a good friend of the channel, John Campia. Uh really think he does a great job breaking stuff down and uh you know very level-headed and definitely not a pompous ass face so i just wanted to get that out of the way and here here we go let's get into the news today here we go what do you think will rob talk to me if i act like that Uh, I don't know, Tyler. I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk to Rob. Either way, much love to Rob. Uh, Patrick says, DC will never be what Marvel is. DC's characters aren't as endearing to the fans as much as Marvel has. So that's so wild, Patrick, because like, bro, I'm just telling you, like, as a longtime comic book reader, if you would have told me 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, fuck, I'm getting old. If you would have told me like 20 years ago that uh, Marvel would be on top, and DC would be like the sideshow. I I would not have believed you. I would not have believed you. Like, Mar dude, DC Comics was the shit back in the day. Are you kidding me? Like, DC was killing the game, bro. I I just don't agree that it has to be the way that it is right now. I think that Marvel has earned their place as a brand, and they've done a lot of incredible work, and a lot of it on the back of Kevin Feige. But DC has incredible stuff, dude. The DC has the they have the ability they have the technology they can rebuild him you know what I mean so I, I hear what you're saying Matthew but like dude like I just I don't know bro I don't know oh actually that was Patrick that said that Matthew says the 10 spot I'm the guy with the theory about Moira making the X-Men 97 canon to the MCU did you know about X-Men 92 House of 92 comics miniseries about the 90s team doing House of X oh my god what no but I will look into that bro Matthew that is an incredible idea bro that is an incredible idea bro 
Okay, I'll have to check that out. Uh, okay, Overmount Game Studio says, Moon Knight Season 2 on TikTok. What? Yeah, so they, they went out there. They were kind of like teasing out about... Uh, <laughs> show Rob that I'm the top G. Yo, okay, y'all want to get really triggered again? Why'd you do this to me, Jack? Jack, why you fucking do this to me, bro? Never mind. We don't have to talk about the taint. We don't have to talk about the taint. But I have some thoughts. That's all I'll say. So yeah, Oscar Isaac and the, the homie. Uh, I forget the dude's name. I should learn his name. He was an incredible director. Uh, they were out there kind of teasing out Moon Knight and all that. But then they kind of came out and said there's no real plans to do Moon Knight Season 2. So I don't know, man. I feel like maybe some people uh already know about the d23 announcements like fucking Patton oswald which by the way not enough of you watched my eternals 2 video yesterday and i'm really disappointed in you but yeah it kind of feels like those people are letting shit leak out because they're like dude d23 is about to be wild but we don't really know for sure so maybe moon knight season two i don't know expo city said strategically would you even announce a reboot until after all these movies are released? Would an announcement hurt the hype and box office numbers? Yeah, I think it would, actually. I think that's a fair point, bro. Like, I try to kind of talk about that today as well. Yeah, it just doesn't add up. But at some point, you have to shift, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, bro. That's a tricky one, though. Super Nate! Hey, Super Nate! Hey, man, how you doing, Super Knight? I think they should use the Batman 2 to set up some connective tissue for the new DC movie universe and make it new Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice League, etc. I like it. I like it. And again, I, I'm not even a person that, like, loved the Batman, but I like that idea, dude. I like the vibe of that movie. I just thought, like, the actual plot was, like, mind-numbingly boring. Uh, Ray Umbo with a $5 holler says, That's the deal with everyone. Wait, what? What's the deal with everyone bashing Zaslav for being a bigot and not inclusive? The quality of film matters. Diversity only carries you so far. Well, I just think that the real truth of that is like, I mean, number one, it's the internet. You know, people kind of ready to get triggered. Like most people wake up and they look at their phone and they're like, how can I get triggered today? Like legitimately, that's, that's what's happening. Um, but also, you know, he's given them a lot of ammo. You know, like the whole... Uh, the whole uh, two thing, like female skew here, male skew here. Like, I'm not saying he's wrong. And if they have the research to back it up, then it's probably true. But it was just presented in such a brash way that, like, you know, it triggered a bunch of people or whatever. So, uh, look, man, the dude's old school. And I don't think he gives a fuck. So that's going to trigger people. <laughs> you know, kind of bottom line. Uh, Calvin Jr. says, what live action Batman is the most Batman? Ooh, that's a tricky one. What live action Batman is the most Batman? In some ways, Ben Affleck. Other than if you take the shooting and the killing out of it, I would say Ben. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a tricky one. What do you guys think? Keaton, a little, like, I don't know. Like, Keaton doesn't really feel like Batman, like comic book Batman to me. I've recently revisited those movies, right? When the Batman came out, I went through all the Batmans, bro. Um, And Keaton Batman is fun and everything like that, but nah, it doesn't really feel... Doesn't really feel like Batman to me, you know? Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's just Joe says, I think what they are doing is a reboot, but not doing a cinematic universe. Joker, the Batman have done better than a majority of DCEU films. I think that is true. And that's also like, it's going to be interesting to see what their strategy is with that, right? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Second Street Marvel says they should get Tig Nataro. To reshoot Ezra Miller's parts. I don't really know who that is. Let's see. Who is this person? What? 
a stand-up comedian. Yeah, I don't know about that, bro. You got some funny taste. Uh, Harris McGrady says, replace Ezra with Robert Shannon Umbrella Academy. Man, you guys throwing all these names. I don't know who these people are. Who is this person? Oh, this dude? Um, Burn it all. MTS993 says, Nolan versus Tarantino. Who's better? Hmm. That's a tough one, but I'd have to say Tarantino. But see, like, Tarantino makes a... They, they both really make their own kind of movies, right? And they're both masters. Like, you're talking about people that shit on most filmmakers, 100%. But, uh... And they actually have similar trajectories. Starting really, really indie, doing their own things. But Tenet was not good, bro. In my opinion. Like, I felt like Tenet was just fucking boring. So, I'd have to give it to Tarantino. John Henry says, if DC reboots in the next few years, it would be a time when Marvel has moved past most of their original characters that people loved. Could be a great time to, for DC to capitalize with something fresh. I absolutely agree with that. That's actually a really important point, is that at a time when, like, Marvel fans are like, yo, where's that familiar, though? Like, where's Iron Man? You know, like, and look, I love Sam Wilson, but like, where's Cap? You know what I mean? Like, where are these great uh, Marvel characters? Yeah, at a time when all that's going on, like, maybe going back to familiar with the Justice League is the move. Like, it's almost like counter-programming, you know what I mean? Jedi Jen says, I cannot imagine that Zaslav can still support Ezra. Needs to replace Ezra or cancel the movie. Jedi Jen, I couldn't agree with you, Mo. I couldn't agree with you, Mo, if I wanted to. Sozin says, DC deceased. Reboot was much needed. Uh, not down for origin stories, though. Overdone. Hopefully, the heroes are already established in the new version. Nerdvengers is going to lie. That, or Nerdvengers for life. You know, I agree, actually. I think doing it so that they're already established is the move. Like, I don't necessarily want to see another origin for Batman, another origin for Superman, another origin for Wonder Woman. Like, I don't think we need that. Like, just go in with them already. That's what the animated stuff does. It's like, no, here's here's where we're at. CGM Show says, you see Feige and James Gunn and Edgar Wright have message support about the Batgirl directors. Oh, yeah, for sure. The, you know, super nice uh, gesture there. 100%. Good for them. Moss Moss says, dear Josh, fart noises. Sincerely, Moss. Uh, thanks, Moss Moss. I appreciate you. You know, even if we get a, a ton more members... You'll, you'll always be a special member to me. Sneakza with a $5 holler says, Sup, Josh. This is my daughter's first birthday day. Can we get a Nerd Venture happy birthday from the fellow baby Nerd Venture? Happy birthday, baby Venture. Uh, Truk says, Digital comics or trade paperbacks? Both. Digital for the floppies, and then pick up your trade paperbacks on the stories you like. Rusty says, hell yeah, man, being a nerd venture. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, Chicken Texas says, great summer of nerd venging. School starts next week, and I have to go teach the youth. Uh, what? Utes? What's Utes? I don't know what that is. Love watching you live, and I'll be watching on off time. Thanks. Hey, I appreciate you, Chicken Texas. Show Rob, you're the top G. Dude, I don't know what that means, and uh, I can't talk about Andrew Taint anymore. Uh, David says, way off topic, but did you see Prey? Are you a fan of that franchise? A lot of people are saying Prey is pretty lit. I want to check it out. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Elisa and I have a, a, a date night, bro. We're going out on a date later, so that'll be fun. Maybe we'll watch Prey when we get back. Uh, but also Sandman, bro. Neil Gaiman, Sandman. People saying it's pretty good. Which one should I do? Chat, which one should I watch? Prey or Sandman? Dang, dude. Look, it's 60-40. People still think Cavill's coming back. Y'all are fucking crazy. Okay, let's do a poll. What should I watch? First. Pray or Sandman, let me know. Uh, Super Nate says, bro, the southern accent you used, it's like you knew I was from Alabama. Aw, shit. Aw, shit, Super Nate. Well, maybe I can just spot him. You know? 
Maybe it has to do with the, you, you, you doing the right things, man. Yeah. Emmanuel says, DC re reboot with Andrew Tate as Lex Luthor. Bro, Andrew Tate is the real Lex Luthor. So, yes. Dude, fuck it. Put him in the movie. Jedi Knight in front of Cara Dune says, Star Wars needs to move the story forward. All prequels right now. A little bit, yeah. Is that why people aren't feeling Acolyte? Or is it because of Kathleen Kennedy? Or is it because of Kathleen Kennedy? All right, thanks, Adam. Appreciate that if you're still watching. Uh, okay, let me uh, let's open up for some call-ins. Ah, oh, dude, I motherfucker. Okay, I'm so sorry. Two call-ins today. Two call-ins. First two in, and hopefully, I gotta make sure my shit's actually good here. Let me see. Sorry. Input, yeah, line, rip. Okay, there we go. Boom. Okay, boom. Let's get Arthur in. Arthur, I'm bringing you on. Arthur! Josh, are you there? I'm there. Are you there? Yes, sir. What's up? Okay, so back to what you're saying about the whole Snyder thing, about yeah. fans believing that that's going to happen. I couldn't agree more. Yesterday, I literally saw like a bunch of people still believing in like two accounts just posting nonstop that Snyder's coming back. I'm like, I'm like, what? It, like, you guys must have like the biggest hope ever because like, I don't see like what more clues do you guys need that it's not happening. Yeah. So here's the thing though, the because I agree, right? And it's like, and I'm a, yeah. a Snyder fan, but I'm like, bro, just re look at what's going on. But here's the other side of it. They mm -hmm. did make the impossible happen, right? Yeah. So it would be very hard if you were that fan base and you literally uh -huh. got the Snyder cut to come out. Yeah. Bro, you would think you were capable of anything, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. Like, um, like I loved the Snyder cut. I loved it more than the, the freaking Justice League movie. Yeah, yeah. But then, but this is where I'm like, okay, is it possible though? Because they basically shat on that movie for like like a few days ago saying that, there's only one Justice League movie, and that was the one that they released. Mm. Mm, yeah. So that's where I was confused. I'm like, okay, was that like a shot at the Snyder fans? Well, or yeah, like yeah. So again, from their perspective, I can't believe I'm defending the craziness over there. But here's the thing. They, yeah. have, they do have a history of mm -hmm. kind of talking out of both sides of their mouth, right? So Warner Brothers on the yeah. one hand would say, it's not happening, it's not going to happen. And then like other people would be like, no, yeah, it's the, I've seen the cut, it's great, we're going to make it happen. So I understand why they think that, but I think it's like, it's just big time confirmation bias, right? Like yeah. they, they're they're fueled by the accomplishment of the movement. They, they feel emboldened and powerful. And so they're looking for any and everything that could get them more over uh, with, you know, Warner Brothers proper or whatever. And I legitimately think for some of these people, it will not be until they're in the theater watching the rebooted shit that they'll finally yeah. accept. You know what I mean? That it's not happening or whatever. Yeah. So. Or maybe I feel like maybe if they just flat out to say that, OK, just to put it out there, we're not bringing the Cinder like the Snyderverse back. Yeah. Like you think you would believe it, though, if they said that or no? If it came from Zaslav. Yes, I think that that might, okay. for some people, it would push them over. Um, but he hasn't really been direct about anything yet. Uh, yeah. And he needs a Kevin Feige. And so, look, I know a lot of them are like, make Zach the Feige, make Zach the Feige. And uh, <laughs> I just don't yeah. think that's going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm sure Zach is like real comfortable with Rebel Moon. And this, and it seems like it's going to be yeah. dope. So, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, Well, honestly, like, I was like, like, I think, I honestly think he um, Henry could come to Marvel. But what if Zach came to Marvel? Yeah, dude, I think he could definitely do it and fit in somewhere. I mean, at this point, it's so eclectic over there that his vibe and yeah. his style could absolutely be it. But I think that, uh, I don't know, I kind of get a feel, and maybe I'm just like overhyping Rebel Moon, but I feel like mm -hmm. Rebel Moon. Could, no, I'm hyped for that movie too. Yeah, dude, I think it could be so good that it yeah. could be like the next big Star Wars, like something that people yeah. really get behind and, and shit like that. So. 
if you're yeah. if you're that guy doing that thing with Netflix, maybe you just stay over there. Like, what's the incentive to yeah. come back, really? You know. Yeah, but okay. So, like, another thing: who do you think is going to direct Secret Wars? I mm. I honestly think maybe Zach could get brought in. Maybe that's like a like a low chance, but he's a good director. Yeah, so he's an incredible director. The problem is he's not worked with Marvel before. Right. So okay. I think yeah. Secret Wars is such a big project for them that it's going to be somebody that's familiar with the process. So that's why the yeah. Russos would have been perfect. Right. Um, I feel like that's still going to happen. It like, could. you know, it's like they're not going to tell us that they're a part of it because it's like, look at how many years it is from now. It could absolutely happen. Um, I feel like the perfect announcement would have been for it to happen then. Um, yeah. And, and it does, like, if you look at, his comments, Feige's comments, and and even their comments, kind of mm-hmm. kind of seems like it's it's not going to happen, bro. You know what I mean? So, uh, but my pick is uh, is John Watts. I think he I think he will. That's what I guy. was gonna. I think I think he would be great. Yeah. Uh, for Secret Wars. I agree, bro. I agree. Well, thanks for the call, brother. I'm gonna let Angel Stark in here a little bit. Appreciate you, bro. Of course. Take care, man. All right, Angel Stark, and the rest of you, you guys are in here, but you didn't raise your hand. So I didn't know if you wanted to be brought onto the stage. But we'll do more call-ins next week. What's Angel. up, man? What's up? How doing? What's How up? You guys doing? I got you. I got you loud and clear. What's up, man? Oh, not much, man. See, I just had a quick, quick, uh, fun little kind of uh, speculating or things like that. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. with all the craziness going on over at DC, is there any kind of uh, actor? Is there any, anybody in particular that you'd be down to kind of like bring over to, to the MCU? Like, if you were Kevin Feige... Would you for sure just get Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, or even like the the girl that plays, uh, or that was set to play Supergirl? Um, oh yeah, like absolutely. She, she, yeah, yeah. Like who would who would be your top picks for that? Yeah, I think that uh, poaching any of those actors or actresses would be good. Um, you know, in, on the one hand, it's just because it's kind of an interesting, just little subtle shot to them also like if you could get any snyder fan love for them that would be of great benefit because i do think there's a fan base there um but also just because i think they're really talented like i genuinely like cavill like i think he's great in that role but i also think he's great in the witcher i think he was great in mission impossible like i like henry cavill so i think getting him and, and we talked about the reed richards thing yesterday i think that would be fantastic he would kill it as reed um leslie grace i didn't watch um what was it? Is it West Side Story or Into the Heights that she did? I'm I'm not sure which one she did, but she was apparently phenomenal. I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak to like what character she would you know do well as. Um, but yeah, I I think that would be great. You know, g- grabbing up that that talent would be uh, would be really good for him. Yeah, I personally think Ben Affleck could kill Doom for sure. Me too. I feel like yeah. I feel like he'd crush it, and I honestly get kind of like Chris Evans vibes from. Uh, henry cavill so i feel like he could be someone that could lead uh the you know whatever the new regime would be at you know leading up to secret wars or even post secret wars i feel like henry cavill could be an actor in like at the caliber of chris evans or like robert Downey jr and just kind of be the face of a company uh you know what i mean yeah, like a franchise, dude. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think exactly. that it could be really good. Yeah, and there's even like there's other actors and actresses that were incredible in those films, like like Amy Adams, dude. Like, and I know Amy Adams is getting oh, older, yeah. but she's so good, bro. She could do, in my opinion, almost anything. You know what I mean? Anything yeah. over that they really wanted to do. So, yeah, I appreciate uh, I appreciate that question. Any other questions or last minute thoughts here? Nah, man, just uh, much love. I haven't been able to tune in as much uh, lately because of work, but uh, uh, definitely I always catch you guys on the replay. So, yeah, man, just have an awesome nerd venging day. You too, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll do more uh, call-ins next week, guys. Uh, Love hearing from the crew. Love hearing from everybody. Oh, my God, Chet. Holy shit. Uh, So, another good stream, another good week. I got to get out of here because I got to eat some foods. Uh, and then I got to get ready for the stream at one, probably a shorter stream today at one guys. Cause I got to go try to get my license renewed. Uh, so I got to get on out of here much love to you all today. As I always say, I hope you, that's right. You, you are having an awesome and a nerdy day and I'll see you in the next.
video. Is everybody gone? Did everybody leave, 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 leave? What a week. What a week. Didn't expect it. But I'm not mad. Interesting, you know? A lot of DC chatter, discussion. Yeah. Maybe in like a year or two, we'll be talking about the brand new DC. And maybe it'll be incredible. I'd love to be excited about DC again. So, hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one. And, you know, just open up that third eye, baby. You know, see beyond what your eyes show you. Luminous beings are we. Not this crude matter. And speaking of crude matter, make sure you're washing out your butt. I'll see you guys next time on the next episode of the Den of Nerds Live.